Hi, in this video, I'm gonna be revisiting the supply and demand order equation. And uh, we touched on it earlier in the course when I spoke about um, supply and demand and basically taking trades at supply and demand levels. But I wanna get into a bit more depth about um, supply and demand order equation um, and really give you an insight into why um, at certain levels of supply and demand maybe you should be thinking about what other traders are doing right in relation to what you know you're looking to do from a fundamental um, and sentiment perspective when it comes to buying and selling because at the end of the day it's about an imbalance in supply and demand and who is buying and who is selling at certain price levels right so we want to understand the motives of other traders which gives us an extra um i suppose boost to our um trade when it comes to the amount of orders that should be in that area now supply and demand order equations are you know really applied to technical analysis um and it's really because you know a lot of traders are purely technical a lot of retail traders anyway are you know they don't necessarily trade fundamentals so much um but everybody trades pretty much technical there's rarely any you know fundamental traders that don't look at price charts if you know what i mean but um there are areas on a price chart where pretty much all traders are going to be looking at either you know taking profit which is going to be forced supply and demand or entering new trades which is willing supply and demand right so we want to identify those areas where there should be an imbalance in supply and demand from a technical analysis perspective and the reasons why we want to be entering at that level at either buying or selling so as i've just said um, there are there are price levels that cause imbalances in supply and demand and just from a technical analysis analysis perspective and these you know levels really and areas are what traders would would refer to as support and resistance um levels and support and resistance pretty much you know all traders 99 you know percent of traders will trade support and resistance levels and this is from a psychological perspective and as we know supply support and resistance are supply and demand levels that have been projected into the future right so a lot of traders will trade support and resistance um, um and look for key areas what they call consider key areas now there are three support and resistance categories that traders will generally trade right and the first one is horizontal as we know um, and that is really um, also an odds enhancer right um, we've got diagonal which is where traders will look to join lows higher lows and uh, highs and lower highs and then we have dynamic which is um, moving averages and then we have a little bonus one which is round numbers this is more to do with you know psychology so let's get into um just a um an example of for example a horizontal um support and resistance and you should know this uh but we're going to go over the supply and demand equation and forced and willing supply so if we look at this level here right we've got a level of you know resistance in fact let me just bring up um my pen so we've got a level of resistance here resistance here and we've got some confirming support price action right there now when prices start to you know break down traders are going to be looking at this level of previous support and resistance as a level to get you know potentially short right so let's look at the motives and the supply and demand equation as to why traders there should be more supply here from a technical analysis perspective right remember with fundamentals um we don't know what's happening on this you know price chart at this particular point in time um so determine value but from a um technical perspective this is you know we're going to try and look into the motives of all the forced and willing supply at this area right so as prices go down we've got traders that are going to pick the bottom right so we're going to look at forced supply first so forced supply is when traders are buying here right if they buy down here they're going to be forced to sell if prices come back up here right 
is it forced to sell and it's a for is forced selling simply because traders are kind of forced to take profit right at tr what we would consider a trouble area right so if you bought here all right let me just get this right if you buy here you're going to take profit or either two ways you're either going to take profit on an arbitrary maybe one to one or two to one um uh, uh, risk reward ratio so depending on how you enter and what time frame you entered you might be taking profits at certain areas right but then if you are trading up you know if you're just holding a trade right and trying to maybe swing trade this depending again on your risk reward where's the first area you're going to look to take some sort of profit right it's going to be an area that acted as resistance and support in the past because so, this is potentially could act as resistance and if prices have basically made their way up right you're expecting what prices to react here most traders are not gonna um you know they're gonna take profit along the way right so they're not most traders are not going to want to ride this out right and expect to hold this trade you know potentially break through a level of resistance especially depending on the amount of pips right that they've accumulated along the way it's very hard for traders to um because they pretty much brain banked their profit even though they haven't taken profit yet so it's hard for traders to kind of look at this area and look at a pullback and look at the amount of money they could have made at a logical area where they should have taken profit for price to pull back and prices may not even get past this level of resistance so the smart thing to do for traders is going to be to take profit around here and again if we're buying here right then up here is a sell right it's a you're forced to kind of get out of this level if there wasn't any support or resistance here then traders would be looking at taking profit at any kind of trouble area so support and resistance levels are areas where traders will be looking to take profit and you know yourselves if you've you know traded for any length of time that you'd probably be looking at the state the same exact thing right so this is going to be forced selling from a take profit perspective and then we also have traders right who are looking at um we're looking at willing supply so traders are going to be looking at this level who haven't entered yet didn't enter down here and then what they're doing is they're looking to enter a new trade at what is considered support sorry resistance resistance support support and a new trade at what resistance right so again if they're entering short that's a sell that's more supply so that's willing supply so not only you have forced supply you have willing supply from new traders getting in shorts that are going to be entering based off of um that level price action how it reacts some people just place pending orders at this level um because they just play trade uh you know support and resistance levels and then what we have is ourselves getting in at this level of supply right prices make lower highs lower lows we think that this is value in alignment with our fundamentals as an odds enhancer and then what we have right so we've got trade entry or trade entries take profits and we've got value traders all in one area and then what we see again if we're right about this this move what we will see is prices you know fall away so net net what you have to ask yourself is why there is going to be more demand at this area than supply and the only reason why there will be more demand at this area than supply is if the market thinks that this is undervalued as in the british pound is still undervalued right from a fundamental or even a sentiment point of view or the australian dollar is um you know is overvalued etc right so beyond the price chart is fundamentals and we base our trading decisions on the fundamentals because that's the number one odds enhancer and then we have our technical analysis from a technical analysis perspective um to time our entries we're looking and trying to understand the motives of other traders and understand why there should be more supply here than demand and as you can see prices fall away right and let's look at another example from horizontal support and resistance so we have some you know uh support there support there support support resistance resistance supports 
and support, right? And again, this creates a um, uh, a demand zone at this area here. So again, let's go through some forced demand and willing demand. So again, as traders, if you're up here and you've picked off the absolute top and you're getting short, right? So you're getting short here. It's a sell order. And if prices come all the way down here, you're going to be taking profit, right? It's a TP. You're going to take profit equals a buy order, right? You're forced to basically take profit at certain levels where prices have, you know, reacted. So that's going to be forced buying or forced demand in that area. Let me just uh, move this over. And then what you're gonna have, not only do you have forced buying, forced take profit, forced demand going on, forced orders going on, demand orders going on there, you're gonna have willing demand as well from traders entering just support, 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 resistance, and people gonna, you know, traders are gonna be looking at this area to try to look to get short. You see a pin bar here, and then you also have some willing buying, which is willing demand, right? From new traders entering on a potential pullback from maybe this low to this high. This is potentially a 61.8 Fibonacci, etc., etc. right? So you've got, but you've got the confluence of obviously horizontal support and resistance within that area, right? And then you get price reaction, and then what you have is um, prices end up going higher. So again, just taking into account value traders, the uh, demand and buy orders from uh, traders taking new trades in this area, and then we have obviously traders taking profit and if they went short, then they have to buy. So you've got a lot of forced and willing demand here. And again, the question you always have to ask when entering at a level technically is why would there be more supply at this level than demand, right? So um, that's covered the horizontal support and resistance. And next we're gonna be looking at the um, diagonal support and resistance. Now, so diagonal support and resistance um, is usually, again, traders, right, that will join lower highs, right, and they will join higher lows, right? So this obviously being higher low, etc., right? And they will join higher lows and lows and highs and what they consider to be lower highs right so you can call these you know trend lines or just you know sometimes you get um you know things like uh trend channels where within a trend channel you could have you know prices do you know some bit of madness like that right and then and so on and so forth, where it might not look like an obvious trend within the trend channel, right? But traders would, again, potentially start joining highs, especially if that starts to come down and then project into the future as to what they think will be um, a diagonal level of, you know, support or resistance, right? So again, let's look at this on a price chart. So in this example, we have prices that are making higher highs and higher lows, right? So you've got pretty much a high there, then you've got a bit of a pullback, and then you've got another high, right? So higher lows, so you've got a low, and you've got a higher low clear and obvious for everyone to see. And then traders will look to join the lows of this, of, um, this potential trend right and project into you know the future and if prices come back into this level 
they will be looking to buy, right? This is gonna be willing um, demand in this level if traders are looking to buy at this area, right? Based off of um, projecting into the future diagonal support. So let's um, obviously go forward a little bit, right? So if we're looking at it just from a, a willing demand perspective, we have traders coming into this area here, right? And first thing I wanna say is, we're not looking to just take these areas of um, diagonal, horizontal, and dynamic support and resistance randomly on a price chart. We always need the confluence, uh, or they are confluence to, um, and secondary and, and to um, supply and demand zones. So we're looking to trade demand zones or supply zones, and then, look for this you know um if we do get any you know di diagonal support or horizontal support or dynamic support within this demand area so um traders who obviously were looking to buy and into new trades at this area for, for the trend to continue higher are going to be looking at this area there's some demand here and that's willing demand we've got traders who would have been entering at the highs right here, right? And if they sell to get short, to take profit, right, to TP. Oh, sorry about that. It's gonna be around an area where they think prices will bounce from, right? So they're gonna be taking profit. If they sold, then that's gonna be forced demand, right? Forced buying. And then we have value traders like ourselves, knowing that this is an area of demand, an area of potential value. Prices come into this area here, and we've got the confluence of all three from a supply and demand equation. And again, and I sound like a broken record, but we have to always ask, why is there gonna be more? Is there gonna be more supply, right? Or is there gonna be more demand from a technical analysis perspective, right? What are the motives of other traders and why is there gonna be more of a balance or an increase in demand and a decrease in supply? And what we get is obviously a continuation of the move. And uh, let's look at another example from a supply example and this isn't necessarily an obvious trend but in this example we do we would have traders that are looking at areas again lower highs being made and i wouldn't actually even say lower highs being made but um a level where prices have reacted from you know uh, a previous high and um what you get is uh, traders will be joining these highs right and traders would consider this a lower high i don't consider this a lower high until uh, a lower low is made, right? So depending on how you would call this a lower low, you could call this area a lower low matter of fact, some traders would, right? So that'd be a low, then a lower low, right? So with that being made, this level now becomes an area where traders are gonna be joining that resistance and again, projecting it into the future. So as prices, you know, go down to here, we create this demand zone, sorry, the supply zone, right? And again, we have to look at forced supply or forced uh, or willing supply, right? So when prices do come back up here, what's the forced and what's the willing supply? So what we're looking at is traders who bought down here, going to take profit up here so they need to sell to exit that's forced supply and new traders right who are trading off of this level right we have willing supply and then we also have value traders like ourselves which is obviously willing supply get price action get pending orders so again the question is why is there going to be potentially more demand at this level 
than supply from a technical analysis perspective and traders motives um, and you know from as far as an imbalance in supply and demand and as we can see prices do end up falling away so the next category of support and resistance is dynamic support and resistance and it comes in the form of moving averages now if you don't know what moving averages are the moving average is a simple technical analysis tool that smooths out price data by creating a constantly updating average price and that's from investopedia um so the moving average is just an indicator right and you've got two calculations or yes you've got many calculations of a moving average but the, the main moving average calculations are from the uh, simple moving average and the exponential moving average right and what the moving average does is just measures the average price over a period of time and the popular periods are the 21 period 50 period 100 period and 200 period and as we uh, are looking at daily time frame charts what we're looking at is 21 days, 50 days, 100 days, and 200 days, right? So if you don't know what moving averages look like, they look like this, right? And what we have here are um, two green lines and two, um, I suppose, yellow golden lines. Uh, so, um, and the green lines represent the 100 moving average which means that it's tracking the average price over 100 days and the uh, golden yellow moving averages are measuring the EMAs and SMA over the um, past 200 days, right? So 200 candlesticks. And what we want to do when looking at moving averages is look for first touches of the price has gone above or below those moving averages. So we can see here that prices from pretty much this point has crossed below the 100 and the 200 period moving averages. Once that happens, what we're looking for is a first touch of the moving averages to act as a resistance or support level so the first touch is usually the strongest touch again it's not perfect it's not going to bounce every time um, this is just an indicator and we use fundamentals to um, you know determine our directional bias but from a, uh, a, a, a I, suppose, I suppose a technical trading strategy perspective um, traders will use moving average bounces and crosses right as dynamic support and resistance and as we go forward i will show you some um areas where we will bounce from these levels right so you've got areas here you can see resistance resistance in fact you can see of resistance here the first time it touches the 200 EMA you get a reaction you get a reaction and again we're not necessarily concerned with the direction per se if this isn't a direction that we want to trade in then we wouldn't be looking at you know resistance if this was a direction that we wanted to be trading and then we would be right but this is just to show you that once you see a cross or prices first cross right these moving averages when prices come back down you can see that 100 hasn't been touched and the first time it's touched is this area then we get a reaction the first time the, the 200 emas and smas are touched we get a reaction right again it's not perfect prices come back up in this area here and then we can keep going forward right and then look at Bit more examples where we can see prices again fall away here prices react around here prices react right there didn't get any reaction we did get a little bit of a reaction here and then prices cross right so you can see when prices 
cross and then we're looking for a first or second touch of a moving average right and the same thing applies to the 21 and the 50 period moving average so let's just go through this we can see certain areas now we don't know whether it's the first touch or second touch but you can see that it did touch here when prices cross above you can start to see prices react again it crosses the 50 then we get a reaction crosses down get a reaction from the 21 all right crosses above get a reaction crosses down get reactions crosses above get reactions etc again like any other support and resistance prices can get weaker and do get weaker the more times that level is touched right we didn't get the reaction that we probably wanted but prices came prices prices crossed down it came up to the um the sma right here after the first cross right and again it crosses higher prices react around here prices react around here and so on and so forth you can see pretty much what's been happening um so with that being said again what we're doing is looking for um supply and demand equations and it's the same exact logic when we're looking at um demand or supply zones in confluence with moving averages who's buying who's forced to buy or where where's the forced demand and where's the willing demand within certain areas so again if we're looking at this price chart we can see that traders who do use moving averages first touch within this demand zone you can see here that prices did touch for the first time after prices did cross here right so this area here was the first cross and now we get a first touch but was that within the demand zone no so we're not looking at areas you know of moving averages within outside of these areas right we're looking for moving averages within these demand zones the second time you know you cross down right and it crosses back up so the first touch of the 21 within the demand zone is where we're looking to you know establish longs and again looking at forced demand for supply if you are entering new trades then this is going to be at this area then this is going to be willing demand if you've bought up here right oh sorry sold up here got short and you're taking profit down here this is going to be forced demand and again traders use moving averages um, as profit targets because it's believed that prices once they go above or they go too far away um, to go quite a distance away from a moving average you will tend to get a reversion back to a particular moving average so traders will take short trades at levels and then try and trade them back to moving average bounces so moving averages are also are like reversion to the mean type trades right so short trades you're going to be forced to do what take profit that's forced demand if you sold here so that's forced buying willing demand from new traders who trade that kind of um, reaction to moving average that the dynamic support and then we have value traders like ourselves who know this is a demand zone where we want to be potentially long as well and again same thing if you sell forced to take profit which is forced buying which is demand traders are going to be willing to get in and then you've got value and again at each area from a technical analysis perspective what you're supposed to be doing is asking yourself what why is there going to be more of a more demand than supply or more supply than demand right who is taking profit who is entering new trades 
why is there going to be more supply at this level than demand right or why is there going to be more demand than supply and again you can see you know further up we get reactions around these areas so let's look at a supply zone level and again we get the first you know when the prices cross down cross back up then cross back down all right now we're looking for areas within this supply zone the reasons why we want to be short if that's our fundamental bias so we'll be buying the japanese yen over the australian dollar you can see first touch of the um the sma 100 right here you can see the first touch of the 200 ema right here again it's a second touch within that area and again, we get reactions every time. So we get dynamic support, or sorry, dynamic resistance within an area of value. Again, if you're looking to buy here, trouble area is gonna be your, your, your um, moving average is your dynamic support and resistance, right? So you're gonna be looking to sell here, forced. Selling. If you are a new trader looking to get in on that nice pin bar, right, and with the confluence of the moving average, you've got willing and then selling, so supply, and then you've also got value traders like ourselves looking to enter here, right, so value, so net net, we should have more supply, yeah, more supply, positive supply, and less demand at this area again same thing applies for each you know um reaction to the level so lastly uh, one of the things you should keep your eye out on is round numbers and round numbers are basically psychological numbers um my theory is that round numbers work because um our again our maybe our affinity and conditioning to round numbers um from when we're young and into adulthood we tend to associate you know um uh round numbers in all aspects of life so for example when i go to the gym you know i might do sets of 10 reps you know um or whatever it is or even from you know playing hide and seek with the kids um you count to 10 right or count to 20 or whatever it is it's rare that you're going to count to seven or a random number like 11 or whatever it is so i think that carries over into um you know the uh the forex markets maybe maybe not but that's my theory and whatever you know the theory is um whether you agree with it or not i think that um there is some validity to round numbers right um and i've i do see it work you can see it in um, news publications and financial publications where they kind of um uh will circle a, a round number is like a key level right you know for the exchange rate etc right so um if we move on to an example of this on the price chart and you know what we see is a level of demand and then we will see traders who are again looking to either enter, right? So willing demand at certain levels, or they will be looking to take profit if they entered around here. So if you're selling again, then you'll be looking to take profit and this is forced buying at this round number and Again, if you're looking to just enter a new trade, then this is willing buying at this area. And again, from a value perspective, this is value buying, which is what we do. So net net, we should have more demand at this level. From a technical perspective, then we should have supply. Who's gonna be you know, selling at a round number, especially when prices have made you know this kind of move here you're basically you know selling at the at the uh the lows so um we can see the reaction that it had which is here which is here and then from a supply perspective you can see the reaction that it did have as it had in the in the past 
around here and this is around the 1.82 round number and again if you bought around here or sorry yes sorry bought around here and you ended up having to take profit around an area your take profit is forced uh, selling sorry then traders who just trade this round numbers is going to be willing selling and then you've got value selling from us so again net net you should have more supply than you do have um, demand at this level right but again this is just um, some extra confluence within this area right and again the supply and demand equation we're just looking at who the motives of traders around these areas so just to recap um, what we were looking for is obviously for supply and demand or willing supply and demand at areas of support and resistance in the three areas of support and resistance or categories of support and resistance are really horizontal diagonal dynamic and the round number is really just a bonus one um, that we look towards right when it comes to looking at an area and this is where you know we're looking to trade so don't get this confused right because in earlier in the course we spoke about you know the the, the creation of you know a demand zone right that's not to be confused with when we actually look to enter right so when we're looking to actually enter right so we have our our demand zone and our odds enhancers right so odds enhancers we have uh, four main odds enhancers and then um, when we're looking at the supply and demand equation right as to the reasons for our entries this is where we are looking at the psychology of other traders and why there should be more demand right at this level right if we're looking to enter long and why there should be less supply from a technical um, perspective remember the number one odds enhancer for any technical analysis right that we do is fundamentals and sentiment and risk sentiment right so risk sentiment that puts you on the potentially the right side of the market and just my opinion that technicals are really just a reflection of the um, the fundamentals and risk sentiment right so again I advise you to watch the uh, fundamental analysis course um, to catch up on the uh, fundamentals and it makes your life a whole lot easier You're not trading at levels of supply and demand and trying to you know because basically that's like trading support and resistance without knowing what you know where value is right if you don't know what value is and what what direction you should be buying then you know it's the reason why a lot of people fail the technical analysis solely because they don't understand value right anyway um one of the things i wanted to touch on as well um in the recap was just a few notes right so the more um, a support or resistance level is touched, the weaker it becomes, right? And that's obviously the same thing with supply and demand. Um, and the more a level touched, uh, just basically um, uh, either lower your risk or don't take the trade, right? And again, the supply and demand really is the um, the most important thing. What we're looking for, you know, is is value right so we know that if that's a supply zone right everything else as far as the supply and demand equation you know comes second or third um when when it comes to and I, and I say second or third i mean um if for example this moving average has been touched you know a few times but we have a fresh level of supply yeah then i'm still going to take this trade based off of the fresh level of supply i'm not concerned at the fact that this has touched um a moving average you know three times if this is a fresh level and i've got fundamentals in my favor right and sentiment in my favor right and it's the direction that i should be trading if this supply level had been touched you know several times for example that's different 
right? And let's say, for example, the moving average has only been touched once, but this has been touched three times, or more than three times, then I'm gonna be less inclined to take the trade or I'm gonna take a very, very small position if the fundamentals and sentiment are still in play, right? So, um, fun, I say, I'd say uh, supply and demand zones come first as this represents value and then um, you know diagonal horizontal and um, dynamic support and resistance are in addition to that when trying to figure out why there are going to be more supply orders or demand orders at that area um, secondly crowded exit right so crowded exit um, is where you have traders that will be looking at a particular level right and they will be looking to exit just before oh sorry about that let's do that again try and draw a straight line right so let's say you got a reaction off that area here and what a crowded exit is is you don't want to be left holding the back right you don't want to be left the, the, the trader who is um you know trying to pick the absolute high if you've bought down here traders are gonna you know basically look to exit anywhere once they make you know the money that they you know they want to make from a risk reward perspective so what you don't want to do is look at a level and say it must touch absolutely touch you know um a uh a, maybe a moving average yes definitely you want to come within the um supply zones and demand zones before looking to take the trade um, but when it comes to uh, maybe something like a moving average um, if you don't get necessarily the the absolute touch you're a couple of pips away from it don't worry right if you, if you see an entry maybe put your stop above you know a, a proper distance above that moving average just so that if it does spike through, it should still act as potential, you know, resistance within that area of potential supply, right? But a lot of traders going back to the crowded exit um, will look to take, you know, profits early. So maybe, you know, again, just keep in mind that if you are taking profit anywhere, you don't necessarily have to always look to take it at the um, the absolute highs right and even entries don't necessarily have to be at the absolute highs and I guess the more experience you get as a, as a trader you will start to see where crowded exits start to happen and where crowded exits you know if you, if you get exits like that and then what ends up happening is you tend to get you know um, diagonal support and resistance from traders taking profit potentially early or I wouldn't say necessarily a trend line. It's, it's more like where you get the market, where it's like, it does something like that, where it's like, it's very, it's not as horizontal, but it's not, you know, it's like slanted slightly, where traders are constantly taking profit before the highs, right? Um, so that is actually a thing. So um, when taking profit, just make sure that you're not left holding the bag. Um, and the market isn't perfect, right? The market isn't perfect, as we've seen from many examples where, you know, you might get um, a level of supply and then you might get a moving average, let's say, and then you might get, um, you know, uh, I don't know, a level of potential previous, you know, support term resistance. Sorry about this drawing, but you understand what I'm saying, where you've got support there and then you've got a level of potential resistance you've got moving average you've got a level of supply in this level here not necessarily there but you've got it right there and the market will potentially you know spike through right or go through and then you know um reverse back and just because the market has you know closed above a level right doesn't mean that the level is gone right um it really doesn't and i know it's taught widely online but there is such thing as stop hunting there is the zero sum game in effect right for someone to win someone else has to lose there are hundreds and thousands hundreds, say hundreds and thousands hundreds of thousands you know of traders within the market 
position side, everyone's jostling for position, um, market manipulation, etc. going on, right? So for you to just, you know, think that market's gonna perfectly ping off of a certain level, right? Whether it be supply, demand, the moving average, you know, a um, diagonal support and resistance, um, or for even everything just to kind of line up within that area, right? Um, it's The market's not perfect. What you should be doing is just looking at the price level is that an area where you wanna, where you think that, that is value? Place your stop loss where you think you're definitely gonna be wrong about the area, right? And if you are wrong, then so be it. Manage your risk, etc. Right? Don't look to trade perfectly off of any kind of moving average or supply zone or horizontal support and resistance or um, uh, or diagonal support and resistance. Right? Allow for some tolerance now um just want to get into maybe some examples a couple of examples of um you know putting it kind of like all together really so um in this example we can see where we have again areas that have been touched a few times all right so you've got that area there then you've got that area there and then you've got a massive move Traders will connect these levels, right? Connect that level and then project into the future. And as you can see, we've got round number right here. We've got the uh, supply zone from this area here. We have horizontal support and resistance where you've got support, support, support. You can see the round numbers been reacted off of there. You've got a bit of support here and now got some resistance so net net you've got loads and loads of resistance and supply I say loads and loads of resistance loads and loads of supply coming into the market from various different disciplines of traders you've got the traders who would have bought around here again taking profit forced to take profit at trouble area so not only do you have willing supply from traders looking at pin bars looking to get short and then you have forced supply, right, from around here. And then you have obviously value supply, you know, looking to get into net net, you should have areas of supply. Why are traders, right, going to get long? Why is demand? Is the British pound undervalued here against the Swiss franc? Again, you would only determine that through fundamental and sentiment resentment analysis. Um, can we look at now for example pound yen where you have um, horizontal support and resistance? So you've got area here, you can see it there and there, then you've got it there, right? Got a bit right here, and then prices potentially should react from a horizontal perspective. You've got this diagonal area here. Again, the traders would have been looking at that area here. Comes down, bounces up. Traders are definitely looking at this area here from diagonal um, support and resistance perspective. And then what you also have within this area is the first cross of this moving average, simple moving average to 200 right here and together with the demand zone, right? So if you want to be a buyer of the Japanese yen, again, let's go through the forced and willing supply and demand orders, right? If you shorted anywhere around here, short, 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 short and pullbacks, right? It's the market made lower highs and lower lows where are people taking profit? TP, right here, which is forced supply. Sorry, forced demand, my apologies. Forced demand, because it's forced, you're, you take profit, it's a buy order, it's just selling. You've got diagonal and horizontal traders looking to enter new traders as well as moving average traders, so that's willing demand. Um, and then you've got value traders like ourselves, value demand, right? Again, who 
why is supply coming into this market from a technical analysis perspective right so go on to one more this one happened recently um, where you have again some supports so resistance 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 support support prices come down into this area here you've got horizontal you've got diagonal you've also got the 100 if you follow this one right here first time it crossed hasn't been touched right within this area and then we get the move so why would there have been more supply in this area right when we've had traders who went short here take profit here so this is buy orders new traders who trade these levels of support and resistance dynamic diagonal and horizontal buying so that's demand and then value that's demand buy 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 now again situations like this aren't necessarily the most common you will have maybe two um out of the three mostly um to get three out of three so for example dynamic um diagonal and horizontal all at the same time um isn't necessarily a, a, a regular occurrence but when you do get it it's something that you should be taking if it's again alignment with your fundamentals more than likely you will have one or two right out of the three but if you do get all three then this is like an a1 setup with your um with your fundamentals and sentiment analysis right so um hopefully that helps again if you have any questions just email me at info at trading 180.com or skype me and um, we can have a, uh, a chat about it so uh, take care and uh, speak to you soon